Number one hit composer was Chopin with his Polonaise in A-flat. Of course, some people call it till the end of time. Yeah, there were a lot of other good songs in 45, weren't there? Man, we had a good supply. Could you give us a little sample? Well, you'll have to excuse me, Bill. I've got a date. She's right behind me. <laughs> Bellman with some of those days. This week, those days are not very long ago, only 17 years, but we can certainly notice some differences between 1945 and today. When the year began, there was still plenty of war. These are Canadian artillerymen. Canada's General Currer on the left, Montgomery in the middle, very relaxed. Bombs were getting bigger and bigger till the A-bomb turned up, and the hole made by a 10-ton bomb was considered pretty big in those days. By the spring of 45, the British were shooting down 85 to 100 percent of the flying bombs. A lot of things in the last war would have surprised Krupp, the father of modern armament. He never believed in Pluto, the pipeline under the English Channel. The loot found in the Nazi salt mines astonished everybody. Rembrandt, Raphael, bags of gold. Less valuable treasures were also recaptured. Lavelle, for instance. 
Montgomery and the German surrender of May the 4th. On that day, all the Germans facing the 21st Army Group surrendered to Montgomery in his tent on Lüneburg Heath, a few miles outside Hamburg. And here you might say the war in the West had come to an end. A few days later, at Reims, the Germans and General Eisenhower signed an armistice. It all seems very long ago now. The interval between that day and now is the same as that between the 1918 armistice and early 1936, when Hitler occupied the Rhineland. MacArthur received the Japanese surrender on board the Missouri. He was a bit less cheerful in Montgomery and maybe a bit more theatrical. It's a demanding role. For amateur dramatics, it was hard to beat Laval, who explained in the dock that he'd been a sort of super scout, doing at least one good deed every day. Goering, the fat playboy of a sinister tragedy, lost weight at Nuremberg, but still laughed now and then. This too seems far off, and we're torn between remembering too little of it and remembering too much. We have to strike a balance if we can. Peyton was tried, but unlike Laval, he was never executed. Quisling complained in court that he'd lost 40 pounds in jail. His judge replied that he himself lost 83 pounds in Nazi jail. French collaborators got other things besides formal trial. Rough justice was sometimes more than rough. General to Tojo told the men who came to arrest him that he wanted to be alone, and then bungled his suicide. The very young Sinatra sang that he too would walk alone, but a million Bobby Soxers fooled him by going with him. Bing Crosby sang the number two. I'll walk alone Because to tell you the truth I'll be lonely I don't mind being lonely When my heart tells me you Are lonely too I walk alone, they'll ask me why, and I'll tell them I'd ride. There are dreams I must gather, dreams we fashioned the night. I held you tight, I'll always be near you, wherever you are, each night. In every prayer, if you call, I hear you. No matter how far, just close your eyes. I'll be there. Please walk home and send your love and your kisses to guide me. Till 